Here are a few of the people who've won against casinos. Number six, two men and a woman. Science has made leaps and bounds towards helping us understand our universe and the laws that govern them. As technology gets better, people learn more about physics, they begin to do the previously unimaginable. Sometimes those involve cheating. In 2004, two Serbian men and a Hungarian woman walked into the casino at the Ritz in Piccadilly, London and won big using physics and lasers. On their first trip, they won 100,000 euros, which caught the attention of casino security. On their next trip, they won a whopping 1.2 million euros. And with this new victory, they were arrested and brought under investigation. After a thorough look into their scheme by Scotland Yard, it was decided that they did nothing wrong and the three were released with their winnings. Here's how they did it. A laser embedded in a cell phone would scan the roulette wheel. It would then send that signal to a computer to find out the decaying orbit of the ball. This scientific method lets you predict where two orbiting bodies will be by measuring their distances over multiple orbits. This would give them an accurate reading of the area the ball would land in. Then they would guess the exact number it would fall on. Like the radio roulette scandal, they'd make multiple bets with the winning bet covering the losing ones. The craziest part of this whole story is that this process happens in a matter of seconds. Once the wheel starts spinning, players have a small window of time to keep making bets. The re-rotations of the roulette wheel. Our physics savvy trio got an accurate reading in about two seconds and made their bets right before the cutoff. The question in this case was, is it cheating or physics? No matter how you feel about what they did, the fact that they were let go at least proves that they didn't break the law. They are, of course, banned from the Ritz and probably aren't welcome in many casinos around the world. Number five, the Rosselli brothers. The Rosselli brothers are some of the slickest criminals of all time. They hatched a scam that gained them millions while keeping their identities unknown to this day. In 1995, the siblings began their scheme by finding a hacker who could acquire people's personal information, people with perfect credit scores. After that step, they stole these perfect targets' identities and started opening accounts with casinos. The idea was to convince the casinos to give them a huge credit line based on their credit scores. To get the casinos on board, they had to have a large amount of money active in each account for over six months. Once the six months were up, the brothers could tap into the casino's credit line. The Rosselli brothers were big time gangsters and had plenty of money lying around, so they dropped $50,000 in all of the accounts. That initial deposit made casinos more likely to match their deposit or offer a hefty line of credit. Six months later, the brothers tapped in. Being the forward thinkers that they were, the con man opted to nourish the account. They didn't just grab the money and run. They played with it, making sure never to lose their initial $50,000 investment. Remember, the loans weren't in their names. They had nothing to lose. The more they played, the bigger their credit lines got. The brothers called it quits in 2000 and got away with $40 million. And they did get away with it. They were long gone before the FBI caught wind of their scam and people started receiving letters from casinos all over the country asking for their money. To this day, nobody knows their true identity. The Rosselli names comes from a pair of actual brothers whose identity they stole. We don't even know if they were really siblings. Number four, Stefano Ampolini. Sometimes crimes are very mundane, while others seem like they came straight out of Hollywood. This is a scam full of code names and inside men with a dash of tech to top it off. 2011, Stefano Ampolini, codenamed Parmesan, hatched a plan with two casino employees in Cannes, France. Using invisible ink, they marked the cards with their value so that the Parmesan could see them with his infrared contact lens. This made knowing what the dealer had and what was coming child's play to Stefano and his crew, who raked in 70,000 euro on their first haul. The downfall of these geniuses is the classic story of greed. Instead of walking away with their winnings, the group decided to test their luck on a second run at the same casino. Only this time, the casino noticed Parmesan's irregular winning pattern and started paying close attention. They saw him folding strong blackjack hands, making it seem like he knew what the dealer was holding. With this evidence in hand, they contacted the police and had an investigation opened. The whole scheme, infrared lenses and all, was quickly discovered, leading to a case and conviction. Parmesan was given two years in prison, one of his partners was given three years, and the other spent 30 months in jail. Number three, Monique Laurent. Sometimes beauty can be someone's best friend. 
but every once in a while, it can lead straight to their downfall. Monique Laurent would find this out the hard way after her get-rich-quick scheme fell under a man's lustful eye. In the 1970s, Monique Laurent's brother got a job at the casino Deauville in France. He worked at a roulette table and became interested in how you might control the results. So, when he had no gamblers, he would spin the wheel again and again, trying to figure out how to predict the outcome. After a while, and with no luck, he asked his sister, Monique, for help. Being the ambitious woman that she was, she excitedly took on the task. Monique decided the answer was in her brother's technology hobby. Turns out that the answer was in the air all around them. They used a miniature radio transmitter to control the outcomes of the games. The next step was to create a perfect replica of a roulette ball with the transmitter inside of it. This took a while to get just right, but they got what they wanted with the help of a friendly sculptor. The rig ball and radio transmitter could cause the ball to land on one of six specific numbers with 90% accuracy. All they needed was another person to enact their scheme, and after approaching Monique's husband about it, he eagerly joined them. They had everything they needed and could begin their plan. The scheme went like this. The brother would spin the wheel until he could discreetly switch the real ball with the replica. At that point, he would signal his accomplices, and his sister would activate the transmitter in her box of cigarettes. Her husband bet on the six possible outcomes that they could predict. Even though he'd make five losing bets, the winning bet was enough to cover his losses and win some money. The plan was perfect, and if not for the greed and lust, they would have got away. Unfortunately for them, the owner took a romantic interest in Monique. With the man they were stealing from lingering meters away, the plan was sure to go up in flame. That is, unless Monique could charm and distract him. Instead, she rejected him, and he started to notice her weird behavior. Eventually, they were found out after the casino hired a debugging crew to locate and remove the source. This scandal was a huge shock in the gambling world and altered how players are monitored forever. The trio never served any prison time, as French law wasn't as harsh when it comes to casino cheats in the 1970s. However, they did have to return all of their winnings. Number two, Gonzalo Garcia Peleo. There's a question that comes up a lot when it comes to casino cheaters. While everyone agrees that you shouldn't be allowed to cheat your way through a casino's vault, they have a harder time agreeing if using math to win is cheating. This question came up for Gonzalo Garcia Peleo in the 1990s when he came under the watchful eye of the casinos that he was playing roulette at. The man discovered that you could figure out where the ball was likely to land by understanding the imperfections in the wheel. He recorded results from roulette wheels and ran them through a computer, learning that certain numbers came up with a higher probability than others. Using this knowledge, he went on a streak in Madrid and then Vegas that netted him almost $2 million. Eventually, he was banned from most casinos, but he was able to keep his winnings due to a Supreme Court judge ruling that he had done nothing illegal. What card counters do is decide, using math, if the undealt deck they are playing with favors the casino or the player. They do this by determining if the deck is filled with face cards such as kings and queens or the lower value number cards. Using his technique, a player can cheat a casino out, but is it cheating? Legally, no. Counting cards without outside aid or devices is not illegal. However, most casinos are privately owned businesses and therefore can kick you out for whatever reason they like, aka counting cards or studying their roulette wheels. Number one, Richard Marcus. Richard Marcus is a self-proclaimed pro-cheater and has the gambling career to back this statement up. He loved gambling ever since he was a kid and used to make bets with his parents. As he grew up, he quickly learned the pitfalls of gambling and ended up losing all his money in Las Vegas. He spent months homeless, living under a bridge, vowing to get revenge on the casinos that cheated him. Marcus ended up inside the system when he got a job at the Four Queens Hotel and Casino. He used this connection to gain insider information on how casinos and dealers push the games in the house's favor. Like something out of a movie, he teamed up with some other career cheats and spent many years perfecting methods of stealing millions. By the time he left this group, he was rolling in his winnings. By far, his most infamous trick is called the Savannah Method. Marcus claims it's the best gambling cheat ever created. The way it works is the gambler holding a cocktail glass goes up to a roulette table and bets two chips, one on top of the other at an angle so the dealer can't see the bottom one. The two chips are a $10 chip on top and a $1,000 chip on the bottom. If the bet wins, then the gambler leaves the $1,010 in chips on the table and wins big. If they lose, the plan comes into play. First, the gambler pretends that they're drunk. They'll then pick up the chips, at which point the dealer will call them out and tell them to put the chips back. The gambler drunkenly apologizes, saying they didn't realize they lost and puts the 
chips back. However, they switch the $1,000 chip for a $5 one. If you win, you win big, but if you lose, the loss is only $15. Definitely a dangerous game for the casino and the gambler. Click here to watch one of these next videos.